Just 10 days before my planned visit to Nuremberg, the 14th century St. Martha's Church caught fire. Nobody was hurt and the fire brigade prevented the fire from spreading to other buildings, but the roof was completely destroyed and the flames melted the organ. It's a reminder of just how fragile our heritage is. Nuremberg's heritage goes back to the 11th century, although it's not known exactly which year it was founded. But it was at the meeting point of some important trade routes and so quickly grew very rich. 500 years later, it was one of the most important cities of the Holy Roman Empire, along with Cologne and Prague. Another 400 years later, Bavaria's Industrial Revolution took hold here, with Germany's first passenger train. And just one look at the central station is enough to convince you of the importance of rail travel for Nuremberg. The invention of a fake gold foil called Rauschgold spawned the toy industry, hence the Toy Museum, and made Nuremberg famous for its Christmas decorations. Today, Nuremberg is a stark mix of the very old and the very modern, which sometimes works well, and sometimes not so well. But unusually for a city of its size, the defences built in 1400 are still almost completely intact. The typical design for this part of Europe involves two massive walls with a wide ditch between them called a Zwinger. Nuremberg's wall was considered unbeatable. The only time Nuremberg was ever taken by military means was by the US Army in 1945. The walls completely surround the historic centre, the river Pignitz dividing it into two halves, Lorenz in the south and Seebald in the north, each named after its most prominent church. The church of St. Seebald was completed in its present form sometime in the 14th century and was also the first church in Nuremberg to become Lutheran in 1525. Although the Seebald neighbourhood was very badly hit by World War II bombs, some of it has been restored. Of course, the main attraction is the Imperial Castle, built on a massive outcrop of sandstone. The castle was first mentioned in 1105, and just 35 years later it was extended and made into a royal palace of the Holy Roman Empire. Meetings of the rulers of the empire were called Diets, and were held in many different cities, but in 1356 Emperor Charles IV decreed that every new emperor must hold his first imperial diet in Nuremberg. This made it one of the three most important venues, along with Frankfurt and Aachen. But when Nuremberg became Protestant, this caused problems for the Catholic emperors, and in 1663 the imperial diet was permanently moved to Regensburg. The marketplace is another important feature of any city. Nuremberg's is famous for the Christmas market, which has been held here for centuries. How many centuries isn't known, but in 1610 an order was issued to confiscate some obscene items at an event that may have been the Christmas market. Unfortunately, the marketplace was built on what was the Jewish ghetto, destroyed in 1349 by Charles IV in a pogrom during which almost 600 Jews died. In place of the synagogue, the Church of Our Lady was built and is now the main Roman Catholic church in the city centre. And if you can be there at exactly midday, the clock puts on a little show. The beautiful fountain is another important attraction. 
It's an early 20th century reproduction of the original, but it's famous as a bringer of luck. Legend has it that if you turn a ring set into the railings, you will have good luck. Most tourists will find the brass ring, but some locals say that this is the wrong one. For actual good luck, you have to find the iron ring on the other side. The city hall displays the two coats of arms of the city. The great coat of arms, to be used only by city officials, shows an eagle with the head of a virgin. The lesser coat of arms, for everybody else, shows red and silver stripes and the imperial eagle, which was added in 1350 to reflect Nuremberg's importance in the Holy Roman Empire. In the river, between the two halves of the historic city, lies Flea Market Island. Originally, pigs were bought and sold here, but in the 16th century, people started selling their unwanted items, hence the name. Unfortunately, it was pretty much destroyed in the war. Most of the reconstruction is in modern style, but the size and shape of the original buildings was recreated. The Executioner's Tower was part of an earlier version of the city's defences in use before the 15th century defences, which we can still see today. It is called the Executioner's Tower because it was next to the city executioner's quarters, now a museum about the daily life of a medieval executioner. The other side of the river is Lorenz, named after the Church of St. Lorenz. Construction began in 1250 and was completed in 1477. Nearby is the Nassauer House, the oldest building on this side of the river, built in the 12th century in Romanesque style. At the other end of the street is another relic of the previous city wall, the White Tower. When the metro system was built, the city commissioned a fountain to hide a ventilation shaft. The so-called marriage carousel depicts scenes from a 16th century poem by a local shoemaker called Hans Sachs. The sculpture was highly controversial when it was first built, but is now one of Nuremberg's more quirky attractions. Another recent attraction is the Street of Human Rights, featuring the articles of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights in different languages. The city of Nuremberg feels compelled to make a special effort to make active contributions to peace and human rights and to appreciate why you need to take a train to the southeast of the city. This lake is perhaps not as idyllic as it initially seems because it was here in the 1930s that the National Socialist Party, the Nazis, held their famous rallies. The idea was to build a huge complex of massive buildings to serve as the venue, among other things, of the party conference. It was to include the world's biggest sports stadium, with room for a crowd of 400,000, nearly the entire population of modern Nuremberg and the Field of Mars, 58 hectares big, that's 143 acres, for the army to put on a show. Those were never actually built, and the hole dug for the stadium filled up with water contaminated with hydrogen sulphide. 
The Luitpold Arena is familiar to anyone who has seen footage of the Nazi rallies as the place where the SS and SA paraded the blood banner allegedly used in the failed putsch of 1923. After the war, it was almost completely destroyed, leaving the Congress Hall, the Zeppelin Field and the Great Street. One tiny corner of the Congress Hall is now a museum documenting the Nazi period. This was to be the party's Congress Centre, and it is huge. It was never completed. This area wasn't supposed to be some sort of courtyard. It was supposed to have a roof and to be the main hall with space for 50,000 people. The Zeppelin field was used for various events and could seat 70,000. The main grandstand is impressively big, but a shadow of its former self. After the war, large parts of it were found to be unsafe and had to be demolished. Today, parts of the Nazi remains are still in use in one form or another. This includes the Great Street, which was to be the centerpiece of the whole complex. It was so big that the US Air Force was able to use it as a runway. Now, it's a convenient car park for the Nuremberg Folk Festival. The Great Street was deliberately oriented to point to the Imperial Castle, the venue for the historic imperial diets, symbolizing a connection between the First Reich, the Holy Roman Empire, and the Third Reich. Nuremberg has probably had a harder time than most German cities in coming to terms with its past, especially with such a visible reminder. Perhaps it has managed better than it thinks. In Mercer's Worldwide Quality of Living survey, it is regularly one of the 25 best places to live in the world.